Hey guys, how's it going? Kevin Cleary here with a knife video for you. Today we are looking at something cool from Reich. Before I show it to you though, I do want to give a little shout out. I'm fortunate to live in a small town and in that town there are a couple of fellow knife enthusiasts and as you know from time to time some of them will share some of their collection with me for review and that's what's happened in this case. In fact, uh, Dave reached out to me and told me that he told me that he had this knife from Reich and asked if I was interested and uh, I have to say when I when I found out what knife he was talking about I was very very interested because this is a pretty compelling knife what we have here is the Reich shadow okay there's a lot of interesting stuff going on with this knife so I'm gonna kind of uh, I guess the theme it might be for this video is you know this this knife has a lot of little surprises built in that uh, we want to take a look at so first of all you know it's a titanium knife but it is not a titanium frame lock this happens to be a liner lock so that's sort of the first surprise it's not what it, what you would expect uh, it also looks like an integral some of you who have seen a couple of the shorts I put out about this will know that it's not. For those of you who don't know, you'll have to wait till we get to the handle discussion to see how this is constructed because it is actually pretty cool. This little uh, locking tab at the bottom will kind of give you a, an idea. All right. Um, I'll just actuate it there for you. Really? There we go. Um, Okay, moving on from those two things, the other thing going on here that you can't readily see is this has dual row ceramic bearings, which is fantastic. And, you know, I wish we saw that way, way more than we do because they really make a difference in the performance of the, the knife. And so, especially on something high end, on something hard use, anything that's supposed to be sort of above and beyond, I feel like it's kind of one of those features that ought to be there. All right. Or either that or go to the hinderer method of deploy, of stabilizing the blade using the, um, stop pins that, uh, become using the blade external stop pins on the blade. Uh, this almost has that actually. And since we're talking about um, the dual row ceramic bearings. I must say the action on this is very enjoyable. The detent is good. Um, and that does bring me to a couple of things I want to touch on that I could see being a little off-putting to some people. The first one being this clip, single location. Um, it's kind of interesting how it works. It comes with just the clip separate and, and in the package, you've got to take out this screw, remove a decorative pivot collar like this one, only it's on this side, and this pops in and it, it's uh, relieved with a square cut so that it, it kind of locks it into position when you put the pivot screw back in. So kind of a cool way of doing that, but it is the only option for a pocket clip. There's no uh, tip up carry with this guy. It's only going to be tip down right side carry. All right. Uh, the clip does work pretty well. Um, you know, I, I kind of like mill titanium clips if they're if they're done right. And this one does seem to be done right, other than you'll have to get used to uh, the position of the knife in your hand when you extract it. All right. It almost lands near this hole, but I did some testing, you know, taking this in and out of pocket, and it doesn't seem to be an issue, at least with any of the the pants that I was wearing when I tried it. So uh, your mileage may vary, but I did check and it seems okay. Uh, now, the other thing that I could see being a little off-putting to some people would be the thumb studs here. Uh, so if you're wondering why I feel like the um, thumb deployment thingy, uh, which is, by the way, a technical term we use in the industry for um, thumb deployment thingies like this one. And uh, it's it's just a little big and perhaps a little obnoxious. It's it, You know, it, it kind of fits with the overall look of the knife. If you take a look there, hold on, because of that clip, it's not going to want to sit nice for me. Uh, so you can take a look. It, it kind of flows with the overall theme of the knife. But it, I, I don't know. It's not maybe my favorite option for, you know, getting that job done. Anyway, 
I don't I don't hate it by any means. And it does have the added benefit of allowing me to spidey flick this knife. And with that very satisfying action, that's an enjoyable option for deployment. Uh, obviously, there's also a flipper tab there. So we have a flipper deployed or thumb thingy deployed um, liner lock. All right. Now we haven't really gotten to the big story yet because, uh, but, but some of the, but the big story, okay. The, the hidden trick that this knife has necessitates some of the, the things that we've seen here, such as the liner lock and the single position pocket clip. All right. Um, again, in terms of uh, those two little it doesn't require it doesn't require the the deployment uh, the thumb deployment thingy that we've been talking about um that's that's a design choice and it's one that i'm sure uh, not everyone's going to love but i will point out that it is removable so uh, if it really bothers you you definitely have the option of getting rid of it and having just a dedicated flipper deployment which is again very very satisfying all right, uh, let's come back and talk about this. Oh, I guess the other thing I have to say about the um, the this thumb stud thing is that it does take up a little bit of the cutting edge, which is, again, not ideal. Uh, would have been nice to see this done with a fuller or something. Like, they already sort of started one there. Maybe they could have, anyway, done something along those lines. It kind of lined up with this cut in the uh, in the milling on the, on the handle. Nonetheless... Let's move on to the blade, which is M390 bead blasted. I do like this overall bead blasting because it kind of makes everything matchy matchy. However, um, in general, I'm not a fan of bead blasting. I just find it washes out the, you know, one of the things that I love about knife blades is those beautiful grind lines. And they've done a really nice job in terms of uh, having this really nice, flat ground, clean blade, very thin behind the edge, like very thin, nice big sharpening choil here. Um, and, you know, a pretty well balanced blade shape in terms of like as an EDC blade, this is almost perfect because it's, it's pretty thick and robust. The flat grind gives it a little extra strength, but it's nice and thin. If you do need to do some of those finer cutting tasks, or you need that really nice fine slicey edge for uh, various tasks. Okay. So really well balanced blade balanced between sort of strength and cutting power or cutting ability. But again, I kind of wish I could see those grind lines, or if you were going to get rid of them completely, then do a satin finish instead of the bead blast. All right. Um, I just find it, you know, it just features that steel a little bit more, um, prominently and, and looks, looks a little, a little higher end. All right, and this is an expensive knife, so uh, getting some higher end finishes, I think, is is worthwhile instead of the the uniform bead blasting that we end up with. All right, um, so now that we've covered the blade, let's talk a little about the handle. The handle is the big story here. Uh, first of all, the ergonomics on this are very good, even with the the pocket clip in place. This feels really, really good in a saber grip. It feels pretty good in a hammer grip. It's a little thin, okay? So it, it definitely lends itself to a saber grip more so than, than a hammer grip, but the, the hammer grip is definitely doable, all right? And the big story here is the construction. The way that they've put this together is rather interesting. So what we have here is a little locking tab. You push it down to, to lock in. You pr bring it up to unlock. And then once it's unlocked, you can actually slide this back portion of the handle right off. And so once you take a look at the internals, okay, you can see why it's constructed the way that it is because this doesn't really allow for, I mean, there's a teeny little bit of metal here. I guess you could have done a, a pocket clip uh, with maybe some hidden screws coming from the inside or something but there's not a whole lot of metal and, and I can understand totally why they didn't. By the way, the way this works is, okay, so now I've got, you know, these two slabs that are sort of a subframe, I guess, one of which the liner lock is attached to. The other one that doesn't have the lock attached to it is movable. All right. Uh, this one is movable as well. If you overcome the detent, there we go. Um, I wouldn't advise doing this very often because uh, when it's in place, 
these little handles do. And I've got to give credit for this. Um, they've, they've designed this in such a way that actually, even though I exercise a great deal of care when I have this apart, it's kind of hard to cut yourself. I can't touch this. Now, if I jam my finger in here and start sliding it down, yeah, I could potentially maybe get myself cut. But, you know, you would have to be a particularly special kind of idiot to do that. All right, so uh, under normal use, that's just not going to happen. Um, now, putting this back is, again, pretty simple. You just slide this in. Now, I have noticed that if you take a look at this one here, yeah, um, this side tends to not want to pop right in, so I just need a teeny little bit of, of finger pressure, and then it, let me take this out so you can see again what I'm talking about. See the two little tabs right here? They slide into two little slots here and here. All right. And the one on the pocket clip side wants to hit. It doesn't want to slide in immediately, but a teeny little bit of finger pressure and boom, it pops right in without any issues. All right. Now I find that I often have to give this an extra little push to seat it fully. And then this little tab just locks down. It slides down into two little receivers that are milled into both of these. I'll quickly open this up one more time. I meant to show you that before I closed it, but these two little hooks, except these two little tabs here, you can see when I, hold on, when I push this down, if I can, See how they pop into place and lock into these two little sort of hooks on the back of there. All right, so let's close this bad boy up and get to some comparisons. All right, there we go. Boom, lock it into place and we're back up and running. Um, so kind of a cool little trick. It does serve to hide all the hardware, which makes this a very compelling knife. Um, it also serves to allow you to open this up and clean it out so easily. Um, I, I actually ran out of uh, forced air, which is what I often use to clean the pivots. Um, and actually I'll use it to sort of, I'll put some, I'll loosen the pivot off, put some KPL uh, around the pivot and then kind of blow this, like if I put it here, I'd blow that direction, wherever I, I want to kind of push some of that KPL into the pivot. Um, that'll, that'll, that'll be after I've already, uh, cleaned everything else out, but, uh, this light knife definitely lends itself to cleaning up that way. Also, I should have shown you, but you can see it equally good from out here. The liner lock is screwed into one of those two, you know, one of the two sides here, which are also titanium. So the only part of this knife that's, um, or the only part of the handle that's stainless steel is going to be the, the hardware and then the, uh, the liner lock there as well. All right. Uh, so yeah, comes apart fairly easily for, for cleaning or adjustment or whatever else you may want to do. Sorry guys. I hope that camera wasn't crooked for too long. I kind of pulled on the, the sound cord. Um, Let's go ahead, now that we've covered all of the features and functions of this, uh, I think, first of all, you got to say it's a pretty neat knife. Like, there's a lot of cool factor here, um, even if, you know, a, a couple little things are not totally my cup of tea or, or your cup of tea, if you happen to be watching this. Um, one thing that is certainly my cup of tea is the size. This is eight and three quarters overall, which is a nice, large titanium knife there. Uh, great materials, as we've been saying over... Uh, the last few minutes up here we have three and three quarters of actually a little just a hair over three and three quarters of uh, m390 blade with that very fine cutting edge uh, the closed dimension is going to be five inches all right it's got a full four inches of grip area so even if your hands are quite a bit bigger than mine you're going to be totally comfortable on this handle all right uh, three and 13 sixteenths inches of cutting edge. And the weight on this is actually a fairly impressive 5.37 ounces. Now I say impressive, but, and you may go, well, that's not that great, Kevin. But in fact, like when you think about how much is involved in the construction of this knife, 
Um, and the, the fact that because of the way they've constructed this, it doesn't allow for a lot of weight relief. That's actually pretty darn good. Uh, by the way, while we're looking at the knife, I don't know if I mentioned the internal stop pin. I know it's here in my notes, but I think I may have just glanced right past it and not mentioned to you, but it, it does have that internal stop pin, uh, which makes this redundant. This is not, um, functioning as the, the stop pin just so, uh, you know, even though it kind of looks like that, I thought it would be helpful to clarify. All right. So, um, 5.3 ounces is not a, a problem as far as I'm concerned. All right. So let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about value and some comparisons here. If you like titanium frame locks, if you like, uh, high end materials, if you like knives that are new and cool and interesting, uh, what else is out there that you might want to take a look at or what kind of compares to this that we may go, yeah, the value is pretty good on this or, uh, not so good. Uh, one knife that I think is a fairly obvious comparison, probably my, all-time favorite higher-end knife, the Riot Torrent. Um, you know, sort of similar colorway. I like the finishes on the Torrent just a little bit more. Um, nonetheless, the price point on these when they were brand new was fairly similar. I think these are like 385 at White Mountain Knives right now, and this was like 400 bucks or maybe three, I don't know. 350 325 depending on when uh when you were talking about i think i might have got it for 325 um but it not not out of line at all okay um size and weight are similar and uh by the way you can usually now i, I don't want to be i don't want to make promises i can't keep but you can probably find a riot torrent these days for definitely even if it's in pretty good condition uh it should be under 300 dollars. so uh because it's going to be old it's going to be unless you're buying one brand new retail but i can't imagine there's that many available retail you're you're going to be buying a, a used knife at that point all right uh let me get this out of the way and we'll grab a couple of other things all right here is a knife that this kind of reminds me of, not because it's um, exactly similar. I would say this is a tougher, sort of harder use knife, but we've got high-end materials, really cool design. Um, and these are about the only two, you know, I've, I've had very few titanium frame locks, or titanium knives that aren't titanium frame locks, but uh, these two are, neither one of these is a titanium frame lock. This, of course, is the tactile knife uh maverick okay what else have we got um the we knives thug xl this is there is a, a full titanium version of this this happens to be the carbon fiber one um but nonetheless very cool design and, and the reason i bring this in is it's, it's a knife that adds a lot to what it's offering by having just a really outstanding, interesting, different, highly compelling design. And I think the the Thug XL is one of the few standouts from Wii that, um, you know, really is in a class all of its own because the design is so darn good. Uh, of course, when we're talking about titanium frame locks, you have to have a um, CRK in the discussion. This, of course, is not a Sebenza. It's an Inkosi, but nonetheless... Um, very simple, very standard titanium frame lock. Um, so when we look at the reason I, I wanted to show you a few different knives like this is to, to make a point that a lot of these knives land around that four to $500 range, you know, let's say 350 to $450 range. And this lands right there as well. But we have to account for the fact that with the shadow here, there is a considerable amount of extra engineering that goes into this. Now, I did have someone complaining about the price point. And look, here is a Cold Steel Code 4. Very classy looking knife. Very capable knife. Great materials. You know, I, I love many, many things about this knife. In fact, it's, it's on my short list of very favorite, most recommended knives. However... Um, the, these two are are not really in the same ballpark. So if, if you want something that just looks nice and is a very capable EDC pocket knife, uh, the Code 4 is hard to beat. But this is doing a whole lot of different stuff that's more for the enthusiast than the person who just wants a, a capable knife. If you want a, a big, slim um, folding knife, again, that's just for doing good 
good cutting tasks. All right. Uh, that's a weird, I don't know where the, how that all came out of my mouth that way, but that's, that's a capable cutting tool. All right. Uh, the military two is another great option for, you know, half the price of this or something like that. I think these are, well, this, these are over $200 for sure, but, uh, it's, it's going to be cheaper, but still offer an awful lot of, uh, performance for you. All right, back to the knife in question. Um, do I think the value is on point at $385? Yeah, absolutely. This is a really cool knife. There are a couple minor things I would like to have seen done differently. And I will say this about this. Um, as I went over this knife and I got familiar with it and I took it apart and I looked at it and I shared it with you guys, I thought about what I want to put in this review. One of the things that came to me over and over again is, you know, this is in a class that's very, very high, right? This is a, this is a really good, well-built knife. And what that, but that made me say over and over again was, man, with this little idea, there's a lot that Reich could do. And I hope they will, um, you know, can they, can they pull this off while also giving me other things that I want, like the pocket clip in the right spot, uh, like a, a slightly more compelling um, thumb deployment method, uh, a couple little things like that. Um, I, I think they probably can. And with a little bit of tweaking, uh, this would be, you know, an absolute, you know, out of the park home run, you know, as it stands, you know, it may be a, uh, a triple or maybe a little even better than a triple, maybe, you know, an in the park home run or something like that. But uh very nice knife, really, really cool. And so what this knife does, it's very capable. It's exceptionally well done for, you know, uh, uh, if you want that really nice balance. The reason that I love this knife, uh, the Torrent, is because I think it does such a great job of balancing uh, really high-end performance with a very capable cutting tool. And I think this uh, Reich Shadow does the same job. It really, really does offer a compelling, capable knife that, you know, you could just, this could be your one and only knife. It's the only knife you've got. You carry it all the time. You do everything with it. And it's going to do a great job of that. It's really well balanced to achieve both a really high-end, classy-looking um, aesthetic well, being a great design with good features and good materials that make it a great cutting tool. Um, so I, I love the fact that it does all of that, all of the knife stuff that you want it to do really, really well. The other thing, of course, is this gets all the cool points because it's got a lot of innovation. It's an interesting design. It's got great materials. And so, well, I must say it won't be for everyone. Some people are going to be put off by a couple little things here. This is going to be really, really popular for a lot of people because it's a really, really cool knife. So there you go. Uh, big thanks to Dave for letting me take a look at this and spend a little bit of time with it. Thanks to you guys for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Dave did get this at White Mountain Knives. So go over there, check it out. Check out the other channel sponsors as well. You can see those links down in the description box. We will talk to you soon.